Good morning. How's the family this morning? Looks like, we, you know, when we fish in these bass tournaments as we did yesterday, we have what we call fair-weathered fishermen. That means they only show up to go fishing at the tournaments when it's just perfect day. Sunshine and everything. I think we have some church members the same way, that they're little fair-weathered churchgoers. So we're a little light this morning, but who's here, who God put here this morning, amen? I asked the band to stay up here this morning uh, to do a little thing for me. I've asked them to uh, uh, play a little tune for us. I guess y'all got that together, right? So I want you to listen to this particular uh, piece of uh, Well, you told music. me to play my tune. That's right. Oh, okay. Okay, you got yours? Everybody got theirs? Yeah. Do that for us. Can you do that for us? You ready? Yeah. All right. One, two, three. Away. Okay, hold it, 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 hold it. I thought you, you weren't Amazing Grace. It didn't no. sound nothing like I Amazing Grace. What would you, what'd you have? <laughs> would you say they're out of tune? Well, I mean, all in tune, we just want in a they're in tune, they're just all playing on a different, different song, okay? Let's hear it all together, what it's supposed to sound like, how about that? Some bad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all can go sit down now. We made our point. Well, you proved your point, didn't you? I sure did. Thank you, guys. We need to thank the band. They do an awesome job for us each uh, Sunday and very dedicated to what they do. You know, the, the point that I was trying to make this morning is what it sounds like when you're out of tune. 1 Corinthians six seventeen says, Whoever is united with the Lord is one with Him in spirit. The point I'm trying to make is what it's like to be out of tune with God. What that, what that reveals to God is that you're not walking with Him. It reveals to others that you are not in tune, you are not connected, that you're kind of doing your own thing and uh, not including God in the midst of it. I like this story. There was a story about an old rancher who lived in a small cabin in the wilderness, far away from everything and everybody. One thing that the man owned that gave him joy and filled his cabin with was an old fiddle. The only problem with the fiddle was that it was out of tune. And the man had no way of tuning it at all. And in desperation one day he wrote a uh, letter to, one of the, to a couple of the radio stations he listened to. And he asked if on a certain day and a certain hour if they could strike the tone A so he could tune his fiddle. The station manager decided they would uh, help the old man out, and that particular day, and the time of a, at the particular time, a tone of A was struck and broadcast, and he was able to tune his fiddle. And once again, his cabin was filled with wonderful music that gave him joy in his life. It's kind of how we are sometimes when I talk about being out of tune with God. Seems like when we get there and we get a little bit of distance away from God or we get out of step with Him, that our lives seem to kind of slide off a little bit. We get more frustrations going on in our lives. And, you know, we just, things just seem like they're all over the place. That we don't find that joy in our life that we seek each day that we deserve and we should have if we're in, in tune with God. Basically, this is how life is. The sound you heard when they all played different tunes when we're apart from God, when we're not totally connected 100% with God. Our lives tend to get out of harmony, not only with God, but with others around us. And others around us can witness to that, that we are out of step with God because of our actions, our words, uh, just things going on in our lives. So how then is it that we can hear from God if we're so far out of tune with Him 
that it sounds distorted. How is it we can actually hear what it is God's saying to us? Many of you know when I first came over here, the, the group that knows this and several from Ellis County there, when I came over here, it took a lot of prayer. There was a lot of prayer involved, not only by me, but by others and by my wife. Is this truly the step I need to take? Is this truly where I need to be in my life here at this church building here in Palmer? You know, you struggle with that. At that time, I'd been visiting other churches or asked to come and preach at other churches around this area. And several of those other churches, as I've mentioned in the past, a couple of them already had new buildings built. They were already ready to just go in something new and get it going. They were looking for a pastor. And I went and filled in. I went and preached at those. And, and you know, I enjoyed the people and I enjoyed the area that, that they were in. But something wasn't right. You know, something wasn't right. It, it, it just didn't feel right. And then I've been coming here the whole time I was doing these others. And I came here and everything was just a mess. I mean, it was, it was just a mess. For some reason, Satan had slid into this building, and he was all over it. And things were just not very pretty. Well, I don't know if it's because I like a challenge, or because it was a challenge. Or God said, this is where you need to go. At that time, I was struggling with that. I kept thinking, man, these are my options. I can go here. This is all ready to go. This is a nice facility and all that. But I prayed about that, and I had people praying for me about that. And I had to be in tune with God 100% to know what I'm supposed to do. What is God's will for me in all this? Because I know basically what I would want to do. You know, I want to go where there's a brand new building up, and it's all flowing, and the money's there, and everything's good. There's no struggles. When I come here and you look at the finances... I decided to come here. And we're going to do this. And I get really excited. Then we go in and we sit down and we start looking at the finances. And I'm thinking, Lord, what did you put me here for? He had a reason. Being humble is one. It wasn't about me. It was about God himself and what he had for me. I think he challenges each one of us and he speaks to each one of us, but if we're out of tune with him, we don't know that. And, and I, I had to be really heavy in prayer on this because I didn't want to be out of tune. I didn't want to make a mistake and do something that I wanted to do. I wanted to do something that God wanted me to do because the Bible's real clear. If you follow God's will, the blessings just overwhelm you. And that's been proven right here at the JVRC Cowboy Church. God is doing some wonderful work here. He's doing it through all of us. And, you know, it's, it's exciting every day when you come over that little bridge and you look over there and you watch all that coming together across the street. I believe all that is happening over there strictly because our church is in tune with God itself. Very, very important in our lives to be there. Very important for the church to be there. One of the reasons that I was clear and in tune with God and one of the reasons that I know this was the right move is because I spoke to God. And when I say I spoke to God, most people are cool with that. They go, okay, I prayed to God. I took my prayers to God and talked with God about what's about to happen. What is it your will for me? So I truly spoke to God. He spoke back to me through the Holy Spirit. Now, that's one of the things that people get doubtful about. They're okay if you say, I spoke to God, because they know you speak to God through prayer. But boy, they look at you like you're a nut when you say God spoke back to you. They think you done lost your mind. God spoke back to you. You know, I didn't hear God audibly, where it just shook the ground and like with Paul, but through the Holy Spirit, through God in my heart, I knew what he was saying to me. 
That's the difference in when we listen to God and we don't. Reggie White, best known as an NFL player for the Green Bay Packers, he said this when someone asked him that same question when he said he made the decision to go play for the Green Bay Packers because he spoke to God. And he was being interviewed on that, and, and he, everybody who seemed cool with that, but then they said, then when he said, and God spoke to me and told me that's where I needed to be. He said the guy doing the interview looked at him like he was a nut, like he had lost his mind because he was okay with him speaking to God, but this speaking back thing kind of threw him a curve. And Reggie White said this, Isn't prayer supposed to be a conversation with God? And in a conversation, don't both parties talk. What's different for Reggie White? What's different for me than it is for all of us? It's the same thing. But if you're not in tune with God, you will not hear that response. And if you don't know how to be still, you're going to miss it all the way. The Bible tells us, be still and know that I am God. In our busyness, we kind of miss that. You know, we, we don't find that time to be still and listen to what God has to say to us so we can get out of tune with Him real easy. And throughout the Bible, you'll find men and women who have shared their story about how God spoke to them. It's all through the Bible. The key to hearing the voice for the people in the Bible that say God spoke to them and with anyone else, I would say, would be that... It had to do with their willingness to tune in to what God was saying back to them. Get that word. Their willingness. That means they're not off trying to do their own thing. As, as I just said I was, I didn't want to do my own thing. I had a willingness to put, have God put me where he needed me. Many of you can testify that too. That you do what you do because that's your willingness to be obedient. Or big word. Obedient to what God's leading you to do. I guess there are also many instances in the Bible where someone tuned God out. Look through the Bible, you will find that people, God talked to them, but they didn't listen. They tuned Him completely out. Weren't willing to be obedient. Weren't willing to do what God was calling them to do and went a different direction. It's kind of like, some of you now, I know the younger people of this may not remember this, but it's kind of like the old radios. Remember the old radios that set up on your shelf or in your car and you didn't have that fancy electronic touch the button, you're on the channel. You had to turn that little knob and just, you know, remember how you just try to get it just right and you go too far and then you have to go back and you, you know, and it just, when you got it just almost there, it was all out of whack and you really couldn't understand it, but then you get it just right and you go, oh man, that's great, right? That's the joy of being in tune with God. Many of you understand where I'm going with that. I know the younger people don't. They don't really have to tune things like that anymore. They just push a button and they're there. But that's kind of how it is when we're out of tune. There are also times when we find ourselves in tune with God, or we believe we are, but because we don't listen or we don't want to hear what God has to say to us, we turn the channel. We go to a different station. I don't want to listen to that. I don't really want to hear what it is He has for me to do. Or I don't want to be obedient in what He's truly calling me to do. That's the tough part. Being obedient to God and God's calling. Rather, a lot of times we just tune God out. Even though we, we're, we're pretty sure, because we've been in tune with Him, we're pretty sure we're walking pretty good with God, even though we're pretty sure that He's telling us to do this or go here or be this, we just kind of tune Him out. We don't really want to go there. We can find ourselves there really easy. One a good example of someone in the Bible that heard from God but chose to tune Him out or chose to turn the station would be Jonah. Think about Jonah. Jonah, he wanted to tune God out so bad he couldn't hardly stand it. 
You know, he just, he just didn't want to do what God was calling or asking him to do. God spoke to Jonah and shared what he wanted Jonah to do, which was go to Nineveh and preach against its wickedness. He said, this is what I want you to do, straightforward. And Jonah, because of his hatred toward Nineveh and the people, he didn't want to do it. He wanted to do what he wanted to do, not what God wanted him to do. So what did he do? He runs the other direction. But God was after him. And if you read the story, you know that didn't work out too well. After he spent a good bit of time in the belly of a big old fish, he decided that he'd pray out to God and agree to what God wanted him to do. So he kind of got out of tune with God, and then all at once God put him in a really touchy situation there. He decided he'd tune him right back in, right where he's supposed to be for a little while. So he did. And once the big fish spits him out on shore, and he goes and preaches, and Nineveh repents, and he goes sets on top of a big hill and starts tuning God out again because he's all mad because he didn't get his way. Now it was hot out there, wind blowing, very, very hot, so God gives him a plant to cover him up. Grows overnight. And then Jonah just belly aches about that, starts tuning God out again. So he sends a worm, and it eats up the bush, and it dies overnight. And then Jonah's mad about the bush. And like God said, you didn't create it. Do you have a right to be mad about that? I called on you to do something for me. I called on you to do my will, not yours, and you're over here belly aching about it. So do you deserve anything else? No. Neither do we. Neither do we. When we deny what God's calling us to do or where God's leading us, we don't have one right to complain when things start falling apart. Now let's look at a person that truly was in tune with God. If you would turn when we were going to Genesis chapter 22, beginning at verse 1. We'll talk about Abraham. There was a lot of scripture in here that I could have used. Referring to people that heard from God, did God's will. People that heard from God and did not do God's will. Both. But I like these two pieces, especially this one here with Abraham. It says, sometime later God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. Abraham, here I am, he replied. And God said, take your, your son, your only son, who you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey and took with him two, two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he, he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, But where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me, your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the pl that place the Lord will provide, and to this day it is said on the mountain of the, of the Lord it will provide. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time 
and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Abraham was obedient. He heard from God. He knew what God's will for him was, and he did exactly what he was told. Now, many of us would have to think about that today. Would I truly go sacrifice one of my children because God led me to do it? I believe where you get there, you'd have to be 100% sure in prayer that you're hearing from God. But I don't think God lays that out to us that way. I believe God lays things out to us now that are a lot simpler than that. Maybe because he thinks nowadays we're simple-minded. I don't know. But I believe that there are things that are a lot simpler than that that we ignore. That God calls on us to do something. God calls on us to be in ministry or be disciples or to witness to others. And many a time we'll walk away from that when the opportunity is opened up for us to do that. Because it's not what we want to do. It's not comfortable for us to do that. Do you think for one minute Abraham was comfortable taking his son to sacrifice? Because he had wanted this son so long. And now God's taken it away from him. And he couldn't understand that. Do you think he was comfortable with that? So why would it be that we would say we're uncomfortable speaking to someone about God and what God can do for them? Or what God's done for us? hear that all the time. I can't really do that. I'm not really good with prayer. That's okay. If you're not good praying out loud to God, then pray to God in your own way, but pray to God and wait. Be still and wait for what God's got to say to you. Every one of us has a purpose. Every one of us has a purpose for God. Every one of us were put on this earth to perform and do something for God. Not just to be here Sunday morning. Go further than that. We all have different abilities. We all have different talents that God has given us. And he expects us to use them for his glory and his will. Amen? Obedient. Big word. Very tough sometimes to follow. Jonah's story, it teaches us what happens when you disobey and fall apart from God. Very clear. And Abraham teaches us the importance of staying connected and in tune with God and make sure we don't fall apart. In today's world, it seems like more people are in tune with everyone and everything else but God. And it gets worse every day. They're in tune with everything. They know everybody's business. Thanks to Facebook and the Internet, know everybody's business. And even want to comment on everybody's business. Even want to be part of their business. In tune with everybody else, but not in tune with God. My wife did something this past week that that she did it for the right reasons, but it kind of caught me off guard. First of all, she graduated. Thank you, Lord. I no longer have to endure math. Or whatever else goes on with that t- learning, because she finally got there. And I think, well, this is great. Now we can just get back to normal. You know, everything's going to be great. You know, she's got this schooling out of the way. She's got the little diploma. I'm excited for her. And then she tells me she's going to DBU. Here we go again. But it's for the right reasons, right? When I went to her graduation, she gets to walk across the stage. Now, so to put this in perspective for you, my wife had an eighth grade education not very long ago. She worked really hard to go and get a GED because she wanted to make something of herself. or She wanted to basically prove to herself that she had it in her to do that. She had the drive. And she felt like in her prayers to God, God wanted her to improve herself in that way. And I'm not going to deny that at all. But she got to do that. Then when she said, hey, I'm going to go get my associate's degree, I'm going, okay, let's, let's go for it. You've been in prayer about it. You know this is where you need to go. I'm good with that. But do you know when she walked across the stage, 
they could tell these people right before they went walked across that they would say anything they wanted to say for them. And she told the gentleman that was announcing before she walked across the stage, when he announced her name, she wanted him to say, a follower of Christ. And she carried a little sign. Romans. I could do all things. All things through God himself. She wasn't supposed to do that. They said no signs. They don't know my wife like I know my wife. She wasn't ashamed at all. Because she knew. Because she prayed to God. She knew what God was calling her to do and leading her to do. And she wasn't going to die, 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 deny him in the process of any of it. You don't want to get in a conversation with my wife when it comes to God. You'll be there a while. The other day, I, on the other hand, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm, I think I'm in tune with God. I, I should be. I'm a pastor. But you know, I, I had a little building thing going on. I got really frustrated with this company. And I let my mouth engage before my brain did. And I said some things. I didn't get vulgar or anything like that. But I said some things that weren't pleasing to God to these people. So I'm telling my wife about this. And she always does this. Would that be pleasing to God? Do you think you please God with what you did? I had to call that company back and apologize for what I said. And then tell her I did it. <laughs> I didn't have to tell her I did it. I wanted her to know I did it because I was feeling really bad. And I ask God for forgiveness. That's what happens when we truly 100% don't stay in step with God daily, hourly, every minute. It's real easy to get off track. Sometimes before we open our mouth, we need to go to prayer right then. I don't think I did that. Well, I did a lot of it afterwards. Not just to please my wife, but to please God. And to get the record back straight because... That, you know how that inner thing, you get that little inner feeling in you and, and, you know, it just stays with you. It's like you can't get rid of it. You know, I, I, I thought, well, within an hour I'd be fine. And then, of course, my wife. But I thought, oh, I'll, I'll go on past it. It's over. It's done with. No, it wasn't. Because God wasn't going to let it be done with. He held me accountable. I think we need more of that. We need God holding everyone accountable. But how do you know that if you're not connected? You're not in tune. You don't listen. How do you know that God's talking to you? Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not conform to the world. We're bad about that. Real easy to get there. Do what the world tells you to do, not what God tells you to do. Believe what the world tells you to believe, not what God tells you to believe. That's when you're in tune with the world and not in tune with God. I would ask you to remember this. If you're in tune with God, not apart from Him, but in tune with Him, then you will most certainly, most certainly know what His will is and calling is for you and your life. Only if you're connected. The Bible's real clear. Stay connected to the vine, Jesus Christ. If you're connected to the vine, you will bear fruit. But if you're not, you're not going to. So today, my prayer for all of you would be, if you're not in tune with God, if you feel like you're apart from God, you got these little things going on in your life, they just seem to keep coming. Turn the dial. Tune in God. Get on His station. 
and listen to what he has to say. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today and Father, we just lift this day to you. Father, we just thank you for your presence right here in your church house. It just fills this building. Father, we thank you for the favor and the blessings you just continue to pour out on this church house and this church family. Father, I thank you for the family. And I thank you for each and every one that you have sent here, that you have put in my path to bless my life with them. Father, I pray that you continue to be with us. I pray that we continue to walk behind you and not step out in front. Father, and most of all, I pray this morning that everything we did, everything we said, was glorifying, uplifting, and pleasing to you. And I ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.